Hey folks, Greg here. Welcome to Modular Curiosity. Guess what arrived from Sweetwater? A MIDI controller! Woohoo! Yes! The Nectar Impact LX49 Plus. This is awesome. So now I have a MIDI controller, which means we can control rack from an external MIDI interface. Let's go do that. And here it is, the Nectar Impact LX49 Plus. And the only place I have to put it in my little corner studio is across this bookcase in my desk. Uh, so we'll just have to make do for right now. There are a whole bunch of things which I have no idea how to set these up yet because I literally got this last night. Faders will interact with my DAW, have mute buttons or select buttons and so on. I have all kinds of things that will... <laughs> pads that can be mapped to uh, MIDI notes. Right now I have it running through Reaper into a VST plugin called Piano One. And uh, it's a pretty decent sounding piano for a free VST. <laughs> It has been over 40 years since I have done any serious piano playing at all. Um, 40 years ago was the first of three major injuries I've had in my life uh, where I fell and broke my wrist quite badly. Uh, about six years after that, I had an industrial accident that ended up, as you can see, with a loss of a finger and loss of motion in that finger. So piano is really tough for me to play. And then about seven years ago, I shattered this arm and I have an internal prosthetic and a metal plate and several screws in my elbow. And there's just a lot of things which make it very difficult to play piano and keyboards. Uh, but I'm really excited to have a MIDI keyboard to play with VCV Rack and with Reaper. Um, so all I've done so far is plugged it in with a USB, run the software to to basically run this, uh, have this be understood by my computer as a MIDI instrument, and then loaded uh, Piano One into my DAW, but I don't need the DAW to play it with VCV Rack. Just going to show that it does in fact work as a MIDI keyboard. So let's see, something like... Uh so hard. Gosh, it's been decades since I've played. This is, wow, this is going to be a lot of fun to actually have a keyboard. Wow. All right, let's go to VCV Rack and see what we got. So here we are back in VCV Rack. And we can see that I have a pretty standard patch going with an oscillator. Um, that's going to a VCA. The VCA is controlled by an ADSR. I also have an ADSR going to a uh, voltage control filter. And the low pass is going out. And if I hit some keys on the keyboard, <laughs> Now, if I hit multiple keys on the keyboard, we only hear one note at a time because I only have one voice set up. And by the way, the way I am now mapping the keyboard, the MIDI keyboard, into VCV Rack is by using this MIDI interface from the core. And so I've just selected Windows MIDI. 
I've selected my device, the Impact LX49, which is my keyboard. And right now I'm on all channels, although actually this is only broadcasting on channel one. So channel one would give me exactly the same effect. So that's pretty cool. It really is that easy. And the only thing I had to do was plug in the keyboard and run its installation software. And now it's recognized as a MIDI device. And that MIDI can now control my control voltage and my gate. So my CV goes to voltage per octave. My gate is going both to the ADSR. So I can go ahead and have a fast attack, a slow attack, a very slow attack, I can also play with my release and off, on, off. Whereas if I had a very short release, on, off, on, off. It would go off as soon as I released the key. That's where ADSRs really shine is on keyboards. And I'm just bashing the keyboard randomly to get those notes. Okay, but what about these other, what about these other CVs and gates? Well, we can actually have up to four notes simultaneously. However, that would mean we'd have to repeat my voice four times. Or do we? It turns out that there's actually a set of modules in VCV Rack that can do up to six voices at the same time. And, and what they are is essentially the fundamental modules modified to have six inputs and six outputs. Let's look at those. And they are the Gratix modules. So you may have seen these playing around and not understood what are all these jacks. Okay, basically, this VCO is the same as this VCO. Okay, so we have a frequency knob, we have our fine tune, we have our pulse width, we have our FM, we have our pulse width modulation, it's exactly the same. We have analog and digital, we have hard and soft sync, it's exactly the same. And if you look down here, we have four different inputs, four different outputs. These are our inputs, these are our outputs. The outputs are one, two, three, four, five, six different voices driven by one, two, three, four, five, six different inputs. Now, any of the inputs that have an extra input in the center means that will now drive all six of them in the same way. So right now, I'm going to go to unison mode. See right here, I have different, different uh, modes. Unison means every channel is going to broadcast, I mean, or I should say not every channel, but every note is going to broadcast on all four channels at the same time. Let's try this. Rotate. These are different ways of assigning the notes from the keyboard to your oscillators. So if I play one note over and over, watch right over in this area. See how it's rotating? Now if I play two notes, I can actually play multiple notes. Here's a four note chord. Pretty cool, and you can see how they're rotating around. Another one is reuse. So if I play, say, a C and an E, that first one, any C note that comes in there is going to reuse that gate. Any E note that comes in. Now I'm going to go ahead and play a G. But if I come pl back and play that E, whoop, play my C. So it's going to reuse the same channel for the same MIDI note until it runs out of channels. So now let's invert that chord. Notice that D sharp or E flat is still using the same channel. 
or the same, uh, yeah, the same CV and gate. What if we go to reset? So it's going to try to use the first gate first, or the first channel first. But if I play multiple notes, it'll play the first two. If I play three notes, it'll play the first three. If I play four notes, so it's just different ways of assigning. How about reassign? Let's see what reassign does. Here's a C. seems to use lowest first again. It seems to be very similar to the lowest first idea. Now here's some of the cool things you can do with this. For example, let's say that we wanted to have a square wave. And instead of a VCO here, I wanted to have an LFO. And I wanted my LFO to drive pulse width modulation of everything. And let's see, this ADSR is doing the filter. So I'm going to have a higher sustain. And now you can hear that pulse width. So let's play some chords. cool sound. But what if instead of modulating everything we modulated only one note? Because we have the ability to change which things we're going to apply the pulse width modulation to. So notice as this is flashing only note 2 is flashing. So however we happen to map our MIDI the second note which is yeah second one here that's the one that's going to get the pulse width. So we can actually get different effects depending on how we use our MIDI assignments. So let's try rotate and I'm going to play the same riff over and over with different MIDI assignments and you'll see how having pulse width on only one of those four really changes the feel of the music. Hear how a different note seems to have that pulse width accent each time? What if we changed it from rotate to reuse? Then it's going to tend to be the second note all the time because reuse is going to try to map a single MIDI note to a single channel. Right there, there's our second note. Just an interesting thing we can do using MIDI mapping as a way to modify the sound. That's pretty much it. Go ahead and use that type of mapping. Try your different mappings. Try different things. But that's how to map MIDI to VCV rack. It's actually quite easy. And now it opens up a whole world of East Coast synthesis. Because you'll remember from the 500 subscriber special, that East Coast synthesis tended to focus on keyboard-based music, whereas West Coast tended to be more sequenced, 
uncertainty uh, generative music, both of which are, I think, are equally valid and equally useful. In fact, most synthesizer systems today are a combination of both. There really isn't a case of one style is better than the other. So, go ahead, try your Gradix modules if you have a MIDI input. You can have up to six. I'm going to try later on running two of these MIDI, see if I can get all six notes, see how I can do that. I'm sure there's a way with some of these core modules because we have other cores. This is going to be interesting. I, you know, we'll have to try this and see what's going on. I just basically play with it because, hey, it's modular curiosity. I don't know how to do this. I'm being curious. I'm learning the same time you are. I'm just kind of showing you, hey, this is what I found out. In any case, that's it for this episode. As always, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And once again, as always, stay curious.